Excuse me. Is anyone here? I knocked on the door, but nobody answered. Good afternoon. This is Villa Hauf, isn't it? Would you please announce me? Am I disturbing? Who are you? My name is Albert Kovac. I just arrived here from Ratsani. I'm glad to meet you. Are you the daughter of Dr. Hauf? Yes, I'm Goring Hauf. You weren't expected. You must excuse the disorder here, but the villa has been closed for many months. We arrived only yesterday. Louise. Louise. Take the gentleman's coat. Did you have a pleasant trip? A little tiring, but I finally made it. And may I ask the nature of your business here? We received your father's communication in the evening mail, asking for a lawyer to check over his will. Please follow me. In here. Kareem told me you're here to see my husband. That's right. He sent our firm a letter in reference to his will. A letter? May I see it? Certainly. I have it right here. Are you attorney Morgan? No, madam. I'm his partner. Mr. Morgan was out of town when the letter arrived. And since the matter seemed urgent, I came in his place. I will therefore expect you, not later than tomorrow, to assist me in drawing up my will. Faithfully, Geronimus House. It looks like his writing. Even the seal seems authentic. And yet... It... I don't understand. Didn't your husband tell you? My husband... has been dead for a year. doesn't make sense. Of course, Mr. Kovac, after your long journey, you'll be staying here tonight. It wouldn't be wise to venture forth on our bad roads in this weather. I'm honored. I'm sure it's only a joke and very poor taste. I can't help wondering why they chose to write to Mr. Morgan. Do you have any idea who might have done it? I can't imagine. Geronimus was the only doctor here. Everyone knew him. Admitting that this was a joke, I still wonder what they achieved. I find it very perplexing. I'm positive it's not a joke. The handwriting and the seal are my father's. How could he write a letter? He's been dead a year now. And you remember that the seal was put in his grave. There has to be a logical answer. Perhaps someone just duplicated the seal of Geronimus. It wouldn't be difficult. It could be anyone who had ever received a letter from my late husband. Do you mind if I smoke? Not at all. Thank you. I'm sure it's a warning for my father. Corrine, you are talking like a child. I think you should listen to your mother. Stepmother, Mr. Kovac. I was Dr. Huff's second wife. Shall I serve the coffee?
There may be more to this than we think. And as much as I dislike doing it, I'm afraid I'll have to advise Mr. Morgan and the public authorities. I'm sorry to ruin your vacation like this, but really I have no other choice. We didn't come for a holiday. We came to the villa to attend the transfer of Father's body to the family chapel. The anniversary of his death is two days from now. It had always been his wish to remain buried in the earth for a full year. He had strange notions, unusual for a man of science. It's very late. May I be allowed to leave now? Of course, Louise. I'll expect you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. Not even a storm can keep her in the house. The villagers are afraid to spend the night here. And they spread all kinds of stories about it. They're a superstitious lot. Superstitious? Why don't you tell him the truth about my father? He was an accomplished spiritualist. Do you see this? Someone tried to disfigure these marks weren't here before. These are real finger scratches. I know there are supernatural forces here. My father was trying to materialize them. That's enough, Corrine. Will you please stop this stupid chatter? It's not chatter. Uh, Mr. Kovac, you must be anxious to communicate with your office. The one modern convenience we have here is the telephone over there. Very kind of you. At this hour, Morgan is usually in his office. Excuse me. Number, please. Hello, operator. Get me the office of Attorney Morgan in Ratsini. Merp is 2728. Hello, operator. What's wrong? Hello. What's going on? I heard strange noises on the phone. That's impossible, sir. The line to Ritzini is out of order. What a strange creature. He has such a faraway look. She knows about what's going on around here. <laughs> Somehow I sense he dislikes me. Did you speak to Mr. Morgan yet? No, the line to Ratsini is out of order. You can't expect too much from these modern inventions. But didn't all the servants leave? Oh, that's Kurt, our gardener. He's never stepped out of the villa since my father passed away. He enjoyed my father's trust. This old place doesn't frighten him at all. I can see it frightens you. It's certainly not a very cheerful place. This is a place of horror where thousands of men have died. The villa was erected on the ruins of a 15th century hospital. All the victims of the plague in this region were brought here. And not one of them left here alive. Now you might understand why everyone fears this morbid museum. Look. These are the mummified hands of men who were executed because it was believed they were spreading the Black Plague. Come, I'll show you to your room. Are you putting me in the torture room? I know it's very easy for you to joke about this subject, but this is what started my father's research into the history of the villa. And he uncovered many appalling secrets. Please. You can sleep there. It was my father's room. Good night. Good night, Corrine. strange situation I find myself in. Here I am, a guest in an old hospital for plague victims, summoned by a dead man to draw up his will. And these two women, so different from each other. Those horribly severed hands. I 
I remember reading about this ancient belief that some men spread the pestilence out of sheer malice. And when they were caught, their hands were severed. contact with them again. I found out the plague killed them by the hundreds. The stench of the bodies poisoned the air. All day long, the tragic carts of the corpse collectors carried the dead to a common grave. A few survivors, hope was gone. The plague spreaders had polluted the water everywhere. When they were caught, the diabolical plague spreaders had their hands severed before they were hanged. Several of them were buried here in the garden. The water, the water. All the water was polluted, and water was desperately needed. Pure water. Babe, who? My father. What are you saying? There's no one here. Stop it now. I hope you will forgive us. Corrine is extremely tired, I fear. She imagines all sorts of things. I was standing there near the mirror. I saw him approaching me from the door. Can't you see it's only a bronze head, Corrine? You see? Now, dear, come with me. You're very tired. You need some rest. She's like a child. Her head is full of fantasies. But of course, we all know the dead don't come back to life. She was attached to her father, wasn't she? It was he who filled her head with this nonsense. Ghosts. Plague victims who return to the villa. He believed he possessed occult powers. He imagined himself the master of them all. Poor Jerome. He couldn't even foresee his own end. He was drinking one night with his friends. He was drunk and fell down the stairs. I'll show you. This is where he died. In two days, it will be exactly one year since his death. I've summoned them from their graves, and now I'm among them. I've summoned them from their graves, and now I'm among them. I've summoned them. Oh, uh, how can I get into town from here? Well, I asked you, how can I get into town from here? Huh. You're wasting your time. No one can make court talk. What's wrong here? 
There's an owl caught in the engine. Oh. Poor old bird. I wonder how it managed to get in there. Uh, you find a lot of owls in this part of the country. They're all over the place. The bird's done quite a bit of damage. Is there anyone around here who can repair it? No, no one around here knows anything about engines. Perhaps you might try the blacksmith. By the way, my name's Nemec. Kovac, it's a pleasure. I'm the new doctor here in Bradenville. I stopped because I saw you reopen the villa. Are you going to be here long? No, I don't belong to the family. I'll just be here for one or two days. If I can be of any assistance. Yes, I wonder if you could give me a lift to the village. Well, sure, that's no problem at all. All I can offer you is a horse and carriage, though. <laughs> Thank you, you're very kind. Don't worry about your car. We'll take care of it somehow. Oh, what are these? These? Well, these are just ancient tombs. Plague spreaders were buried here during the 15th century. They put them here in unconsecrated ground to show their hatred for those who spread the plague and poison the water. That sounds incredible. Just an old legend. They thought that by doing this, their souls would be condemned to wander throughout eternity. As for me, I've never met any. <laughs> if I'm not being too indiscreet, tell me, what brought you here? Ah, Miss Corrine. Good morning. Good morning. Are you going to the village, Mr. Kovac? Come along. Do you mind if I go along? Well, not at all. I have some errands to do. May I help you? Thank you. Get in. Is the line to Ratzani repaired? Yes, the line was repaired this morning. What number are you calling? Hello? 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 Oh! Will you excuse me? It'll only take a few minutes. Another couple of days, I think. As soon as everything is taken care of, I'll return to Kravitz. I hate staying at the villa now. You know, from Redzeni to Kravitz, the distance is very short. I hope we'll have a chance to see each other again. I'd look forward to it. I'm sure you thought I was very silly last night. No, why? The whole thing just got on your nerves, that's all. I must say that Cleo seemed terribly worried about you, however. <laughs> Don't believe it. We have nothing in common, really. We've lived apart most of the time. You see, I was in school in Rossegni, and, and I didn't even know they'd been married until I came home from my vacation. We often came to this lake when I was here on holiday. My father loved me very much. He was an exceptional man. Much different from the way people picture him. Here, no one really understood him. Do you see this? What is it? A sundial he made that tells the best time for fishing. When the shadow reached the short pole, he would take his boat into the reeds. I must say, he certainly had a lot of imagination. Why do you say that? You're like everybody else. I know what you imply by that. I didn't mean to offend you, Kareem. But last night, it so happened that I listened to one of his recordings on the phonograph, and he was talking of plague spreaders, water, and death cards. I've heard it also. He had powers beyond the world of men. Do you think that the letter was forged? It's hard to tell. He was there last night. There was something he wanted to say. It's my father! I saw him. 
I saw him in the boat. I tell you, it was my father. I saw him. What are you saying? Can't you see the boat is empty? Look. Look. There's water dripping from the oars. Somebody was there. Oh, Albert. Albert, don't go away. Don't worry. I'm so afraid. I won't leave Don't leave me alone, please. I promise. Hey, Albert. Corrine. Yes, we're coming right away. Ah, they're dry already. Here they are. <laughs> I have a very special prescription for off-season bathers. A local product. It works miracles. You'll see. That's where you keep it. Right, Stone? Here, 1897. <laughs> that was a vintage year, if ever there was one. Ah, you're an expert in the field of wine, my friend. This, this will put fire in your veins. You first, Stinnell. No? Albert? Thanks for everything, Stinnell. For Corrine, pills from the kitchen and syrup from the cellar. Take this. It's good for you. And I recommend that you go back home right away. Damn clothes are bad for anyone's health. If it's all right with Corrine, I would much rather pursue the question of the letter. Oh, by the way, uh, here it is. What do you make of it, Doctor? So, this is supposed to be the seal of Geronimus, hmm? May I look at it, Doctor? Just a moment. I think I still have one of his old letters. No doubt about it. It's his. Both seals have the same indentation here on the left side. He's right. At this point, we must take action. I'll report this to the proper authorities. Leave the villa at once you've got to. It's a place of death. Save yourself before it's too late. Before death strikes again. Tomorrow is the anniversary of your father's death, do you understand? Of course, Stinnell. Of course. He worries about you because your father was his friend. I think we'd better go. I'll come and see you tomorrow, Stinnell. You must rest now. And thank you very much. And try not to worry about anything. Corrine, come on. I'll see you soon, Mr. Stinnell. I'll never see her again. I know it. The day of revenge is coming. What kind of a public building is this? Dear Kovac, this is just a village. It doesn't pay to be in politics. The pharmacist is also mayor in his spare time. <laughs> Come on. Beryl? Beryl, where are you? Corrine, we 
We'd better be on our way. I'm coming. You go on ahead. We won't be more than an hour. I'll be waiting for you. I, the undersigned, hereby declare that I found in the local pharmacy the body of Dr. Beryl Nielsen, pharmacist and elected mayor of this town. I hereby state that death is attributed to uh, heart failure. This will interest the police, I suppose. No. Why the police? The certificate I'm signing is more than sufficient. But shouldn't you report any violent or accidental death to the police? Death by heart failure is a sudden death, not a violent one. Would you please give me a couple of blank forms, number 113? Thank you. All this red tape. All these formalities. One moment. Who filled these out? I got them ready for you. I was free early this morning, so I wrote them out for you. This morning? How did you know the mayor was dead? The cars of the corpse collectors passed by last night. Everybody here in town heard it. The corpse collectors always come when somebody is doomed to meet his fate. They've passed by three times now. You picked the mayor, but it might have happened to anybody here. It was bound to be here. Why? He was one of those present at the death of Geronimus Hauf. They're all marked to die. Oh, Kareem. Would you mind, dear? You went to the village. Here, Kareem. My back. A bit further down. What's wrong? You're trembling like a leaf. We found the mayor's body. The mayor's body? I saw it. It was horrible. Where did you find him? In the pharmacy. His face was eaten away with acid. Was he your friend? No. He used to come here to see your father. One of his many strange friends. Geronimo's best friends were all of such low extraction. You've always been so aristocratic in your taste. You hated his friends, didn't you? You seem to forget I was accustomed to a different kind of society. All the nobility of credit. Hmm. I was under the impression that my father had taken you away from the stage. I threw away a career. Who do you think your father was, after all? A famous doctor? A great scientist? He brought me way out here, to this place of horror. To this house of shadows and blood. <sighs> This is not what I had hoped for. All my friends envied me. <laughs> they believed my husband had a great future. They were so wrong. A poor visionary, his head full of crazy ideas. And finally wound up mad country doctor with illusions of grandeur. Yes, I hated him. As I hated all his stupid friends. And all that they stand for. Operator, will you get me Rathdaney, Methus 27, 
Here we are. Ah. This is the report on the death of Geronimus Howe. It was compiled by his five friends who were with him when the accident happened. <laughs> now you will see for yourself. Now, Geronimus Howe. Deceased the 2nd of May? Yes, it's one year tomorrow. I remember him so well. Yes, we believe you, but continue. Just as you wish. Where was I? Due to an accident involving the fracture of the second cervical vertebra. It's, it's this one here, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's the one. Go on. Hmm. While in our presence, on the stairs of his residence, in witness to... And there follow the names of the five who were at the villa that night. Three of them are dead. The others haven't long to wait. Mark Richter. Deceased the 3rd of July, violent death. Elia Ivert. Deceased the 6th of October of heart failure. The late mayor came third. Certainly a strange coincidence. Coincidence? When after more than four centuries the corpse collector's cart was at the You still mean to say it's a coincidence? Now the fourth is next. Who's the fourth? Oscar Stinnell. Stinnell, your patient. It's the next one. The name of the fifth witness. I tried for a whole year to decipher his handwriting. It isn't anybody I know. I could tell the people from around here. It's illegible. Really? Like someone trying to conceal his identity. But it won't be enough to avoid the vengeance of Geronimus. I can't imagine why Dr. House should be seeking revenge on his friends. They said they were friends of his. Instead, they hated him because he dabbled in the occult. May I take this record along? Well, I'm really afraid it's an official uh, record. I can vouch for Attorney Kovacs' integrity. Well, in that case. But please be sure that you bring it back here. Of course. Good day. He's so convinced of what he says, it's pathetic. Come on. Hello, doctor. Feeling better, huh? Not too bad. You don't believe the mayor died from natural causes, hmm? If we're to believe the clerk, even Stinnell is in great danger. <sighs> that man is doomed anyway. It's a matter of a few short weeks. He seemed to be frightened at the name of Geronimus. And he was. Everybody here feared Geronimus. Put yourself in their position. A lunatic who endeavored to summon the souls of the ancient dead. His daughter speaks of him as a man of extraordinary gifts. Oh, he wasn't a fool, mind you. His publications caused a great deal of excitement at the university. But it didn't last, so he retired here to try to prove his theories. With the result that the local people joined forces to sign a petition to send him away. And I think that broke his heart. Do you take these things seriously? Mm. I'm a doctor. I deal only in facts. What about you, Mr. Kovac? I agree. The living I may fear, but certainly not the dead. Uh. Let's go. We'll find some means back to the villa. Five witnesses, and only two are still alive. Old Stinnell and an unknown person who signed the accident report in the illegible script. Who could it be? Three men have already died. At this point, it's hard to believe in coincidence. There has to be some time. Was this something Geronimus had planned? One can't deny that his presence is felt everywhere.
life before paralysis tied him down to a wheelchair. I guess he couldn't stand the pain anymore. I'll come by the station later to sign the report. Right, doctor. Do you still think this is a coincidence, doctor? I don't know anymore. <sighs> and do you realize that we had been warned by the clerk and took no notice of his words? What do you think we could have done to prevent Steno from taking his own life? Go ahead, take him away. His face had the same look of horror as we found on the mayor's. Do you really think the ghost of Geronimus goes around harvesting victims? What if Geronimus were alive? Yes, alive. There's a letter in his own hand. These apparitions of his, suppose they were real. No one ever saw the body of Geronimus dead, not even his wife. Remember, we have no evidence. We only know he died through a statement of his five friends who say that they saw him fall down the stairs. Does that seem enough to you? What you think, then, is that the statement they made is false. Is that right? But why would Geronimus have planned a thing like that? Why? I don't know yet. But you realize there has to be a motive. Maybe he wanted to disappear from a hostile world. Yes, if that were the case, he would be dead for everybody. Yes, dead to all but five. These men spelled danger to Geronimus, which is why he felt he was compelled to get them out of the way. Four of them are dead. The fifth is completely unknown. Look at this, Doctor. Look here. It's, it could have been half burned. It's half burned. He must have tried to get rid of it. He has returned. Save yourself. He summoned you, too. He summoned you, too. Hmm. He must have meant to leave a warning for the fifth witness, and he didn't quite make it. Then something should be done. Today is the anniversary of the death of Geronimus. The day they're going to transfer his corpse. At last, we'll be able to see if his body was ever buried. is empty. And he isn't dead after all. The fifth witness really is in danger of death. How can he be warned? Who could it be? I could I tell, tell the people from around here. Save yourself. He summoned you too. Is there a telephone nearby? Yes, come with me.
Yes, I want credits. Try to hurry the call. Do you understand now? It's Joseph Morgan. He's the fifth witness. The letter Geronimus wrote was addressed to him. Operator? Yes, that's right. This is Kovac here. Is Attorney Morgan there? Operator? Speak up. Louder. What trip? He left for the Villa Hope. No, I'll take care of it. We better go back immediately. We must hurry. Come on. He's already arrived. Look here, Doctor. I tell you, it was he. There's no doubt about it. He seemed to be looking at me with those spent eyes of his. If Geronimus is dead, there must be a reason for these machinations. There are many things you could and should explain to us, Morgan. What made you come here? Let him rest now, some other time. Please excuse me. We'll talk later. This is the letter that was sent to you. I'll see you shortly. You'll be all right, Morgan. Take it easy. I don't know anything. Honestly, I was locked in the kitchen. Oh, I beg you, Louise. Tell me, what did you see? Nothing at all. Then what are you so scared about? What is it? You must tell me what happened. It's impossible to explain it. The house seemed full of a coldness. More than it's ever become in winter. Suddenly, all the doors began to creak. The minute I heard that, I was so frightened, I ran and locked myself in. It was then that I heard his voice. Whose voice, Louise? The voice of Dr. Geronimus Hauf. I'm leaving here. I won't stay in this house any longer. My father! Where did the voice come from? What did it say? Maybe Kurt knows he was going around the villa. Where is Kurt? I really don't know. I already told you. I was locked up in the kitchen. Please excuse me. Good night.
How is Mr. Morgan? Better. It was only a momentary shock. Oh. I caused you a lot of trouble, Albert. Can you ever forgive me? It was I who asked you to remain. It's all my fault. I still wonder at how lucky I was. It's given me a chance to stay close to you that much longer. Albert, I need you so. Sometimes I can't believe it's true. What really happened to my father? <clears throat> How about something to drink for a thirsty doctor? Hmm? With pleasure, doctor. What would you like? A cognac, if you have it. Only a drop, of course. <laughs> How's Morgan? He'll be all right soon. Hmm. What do you think of his story? Morgan's very much of a realist. He's not the type that sees ghosts. In that case, you have reason to think the body is still around? Above everything else, court has to be questioned. It's very important that he be found. Yes, but... Oh. Don't get up. Thank you. Mm, perfect. can't pick up at the same point after a whole year of silence. No matter what. Yet once I was ready to leave Geronimus for you. You mustn't say that. I'm in love with you. Yes. But this didn't stop you from disappearing. We had both agreed to this. Maybe. But not for a whole year. Oh, don't. Let me be, please. Go away. Oh, no.
Good isn't here either. What's that? It's my doll with a music box inside. I, I've heard this melody before. It's an ancient lullaby I learned from my father. Remember pure water, pure water will save you. The water will save you. This warning Pure water for will you. save you. Remember. What can remember that mean? This warning for you. I will therefore expect you, not later than tomorrow, to assist me in drawing up my will. Faithfully, Geronimus Howe. You should have known at once it was a trap. We're both in danger. We can't remain here. We must go. Please, we'll make a new life somewhere else. And the letter? What about the one who wrote it? He knows far too many things. Then you don't believe it was Geronimus, do you? Certainly not. I know who engineered all of this. What are you going to do? Nothing. Just defend myself. There was also another witness that night. Someone whose presence we forgot. Court. The guard. This is where my father often came to work on his experiments. It's the place where the plague spreaders were executed centuries ago. Let's get out of here, Albert. The night of your revenge has begun. I embalmed your body, all is done, Master. One year ago today, 
and the forces of evil you dominated will break loose. The plague spreaders among us again. They'll show mercy for no one. Punishment will strike the innocent and the guilty alike. Please forgive me, Master, but I must break my long silence now. Your daughter, Corinne, at least, has to be warned. Before it's too late. Did you find him? No. He seems to have disappeared. And we've been looking everywhere in the villa, Doctor. <coughs> It's over for you. Be careful, Albert. Don't go near him. It looks like the plague. A strangely virulent form of the plague. They've come. They're all around us. It's incredible. It's unmistakably the plague. It's beginning, the night of his vengeance. There will be no escape. I saw it all one year ago, right here, where you're standing now. That they were all here, his friends who had betrayed him. Right over there! Before the mirror! moment he'd been expecting. Dr. House Force, thunder out of him!
This is a petition to get me out of this villa. Away from my research. It's signed by all of you. You all fear me. And you have reason to. You've tried to ruin me. But I know things that will destroy each of you. You, Stinner. Always so shy and reserved. But an ugly usurer without mercy. Blackmailer of your debtors. You, Richter. An embezzler with a long police record. You came to this village to escape justice. You, Ivert, a thief and a cheat, posing under the guise of respectability. And you, Mayor Nielsen, I know of your filthy traffic in drugs. And as for you two, the moment of reckoning has come. I've long known of your clandestine affair. It's such a pity to break up your romance, isn't it? But I'll expose all of you. You're finished. I'll make you pay for this betrayal. And you, Cleo, can say goodbye to your comfortable life. I'll throw you out of this house, you tramp. Kill him, Joseph! Oh! No. No. Accursed murderers. You won't escape my anger. My vengeance will find you wherever you are. My curse on all of you. <laughs> You didn't believe me, but now you will become aware of my power. Spirits of evil whose powers come from beyond the grave, restless souls of the plague spreaders who wander through these halls, avenge me. I've summoned you. Avenge me. going to die. 
You don't frighten me, Geronimo. Come and get me if you can. I'm ready for you. No! 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 Look after Corrine. All right. This way. centuries ago have emerged from their graves. The fountain. It's drying up. Don't you understand, Doctor? It's only the water that keeps them away. Our only hope is rain. This way. I'll try and stop them. Take care of Corrine. No. What are you trying to do, Albert? No. No, Albert, no. Oh, oh. 